Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20 and welcome to episode 47 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. Getting logged in, ready to make some cool stuff. Uh, I am hanging out with Muggs. He's around here somewhere. There he is. Well, at least his nameplate's over there. What's going on, Muggs? Not much. Just getting ready to get to work on here. Nice. This thing. Yeah, I spent a little time between these episodes, like I promised, doing a little bit of crafting. So you can see me here getting ready to make my turtles. I actually went mining because uh, I didn't have nearly enough diamonds and I didn't want to burn all my UU matter. So uh, I got a little bit of diamonds underground and then I used a little bit of the UU matter here to uh, go ahead and make what I needed to make. And then meanwhile, I need to get myself how many of these axes? I need, well, I decided I want 15 more uh each because i want to do like a whole chunk so 16 blocks across right is a chunk so uh if i make 16 of these turtles you can see i've already made 16 mining wells so i should be able to pull this off so i'm gonna need 15 um of these sticks so you know we'll see oh that was not what i wanted to do was it this ought to do sure why not so I need, uh, I want to use diamonds. Now, before you guys yell at me and say, Dire Wolf, what are you doing? You're wasting diamonds. Well, yeah, I know. I know. You can use, because of Miss Peripherals, you can use the ruby and the sapphires and all that stuff for your turtles. But, you know, I'm a purist. I kind of like to stick with the way the mod was intended and when it was written. So I know that it was, uh, you know, Dan 200's intention that uh, these, these mining turtles require diamond tools. And you know what? I think I'm going to stick with that. So... Diamond pickaxes all the way. You know, gotta gotta do what you gotta do. So just making, you know, as many of these as I can. That ought to be right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Oh good, my math is right. I didn't waste diamonds. So if you guys weren't paying attention last episode when Muggs first showed up, he was uh, the winner during the uh, Minecraft marathon. We did a um, giveaway on the uh, marathon where we basically said, uh, yeah, anybody who uh, donates money. And uh, we had an auction and basically the, the um, people auctioned and just kept uh, submitting for stuff, uh, trying to win uh, the, uh, the, the prize of uh, co-starring in an episode with Direwolf 20. How cool is that? So it was just my little giveaway during the Minecraft marathon, you know, just thought I would uh, do whatever I could there and it was it was a lot of fun. And uh, Muggs is the winner. He donated a whole bunch of money, I want to say $1,600. So that was awesome of him to Child's Play Charity. So he's uh, hanging out with me for two episodes because we uh, started working on a fun project and we wanted to finish it. So I didn't want to wrap up this project without him, so I said he's sticking around for a second episode and we're gonna do what we can. So I'm just making sure I've got pretty much everything I need. I could use a few more redstone energy conduits. Uh, I could use a lot more frames, uh, which I'm cooking up some brass for. And uh, I could probably, if I really was being super cool about it, use some ender chests, because I think I'm going to want a few of them. In fact, mugs, I'm going to put you to work. You want to make me uh, 15 or so ender chests? Okay. Buddy, old pal, chum. You we should find all do the ingredients have nearby. Frames from before still. Yeah, we have a few frames, didn't I? I do you have some on you? Yeah. Oh, good. You have some good because I uh, did not. I have some more brass though, and we're gonna need a lot of frames. Probably a good healthy bit. So I will be back in just a few moments once I throw these redstone um, energy conduits together and you know do what I can. And Muggs is gonna work on some ender chests for me, and then we will be back. All right, guys. See you in a few when we're ready to start building this awesome mining machine. All right, guys. We're back and on our way to Mining Age Four, the one that was, at least as far as I could tell, pretty stable. I actually spent a little time uh, between last episode and this one while um, I uh, had some time to kill. I ran around this age and explored a bit and uh, found some ancient libraries. So had some fun collecting some more miscraft pages because I realized I didn't quite have all the good ones that I wanted. There's still a few I don't have. I want to try and find mugs like a relatively tall mountain that I can kind of call, you know, pretty high up. Um, doesn't really need to be too high, but ideally this thing will be able to run for a while. I think this one in the distance here would probably do. I really just want this to be able to go like forward and not run into things. Like that's the plan. So if we build up here, and did you bring some scaffolding? I, I saw you were playing with yep. that at the end of last episode. That's one of those things that I never use and probably should. Because it's super handy. 
So awesome, that stuff. Yoink. <laughs> All right, so let's say that we want to build a frame machine. So basically, guys, what we're going to need to do is build a platform uh, with all the controls and all the stuff on it and on that platform uh, we're going to hook up the, 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 the mining wells, we're going to hook up the turtles, we're going to hook up everything. But we want this platform to be able to move and that's what the frame motors are for. The frame motors are going to be able to push this thing around. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to build something uh, pretty interesting. It's called a um, inchworm drive. Um, and it's a way to use frames to continuously and repetitively move an object in space. So you guys have saw the frame sitting still. We're going to build a machine that the frame moves along with the uh, frame machine and then continues to add on to it. So why don't I build a platform out of frames just to get started? All right, guys, so here's a quick tutorial on how to make yourself an inchworm drive. It's a pretty nifty device, okay? So what you're going to need is a couple things, and I'm going to get sure uh, that I have my handsaw and my screwdriver and all this good stuff here. Now, you're actually going to need um, a couple things here. I want to make uh, some panels, okay? Now, panels on frames and covers on frames each have some really important purposes, okay? Now, this is for those guys who are new to the channel, and I've got a couple of these guys ready to go. Uh, what happens is the frame mode as we saw can move frames and it moves anything that's attached to the frame however if you have a cover on the frame okay that's going to attach in and it looks real nice and fancy and what it does is it prevents um, whatever is touching that frame from getting moved so basically the cover moves with the frame instead of the block so in this case okay if this piece of cobble is here when the frame moves the cobble moves okay but if I have a cover here and the cobble when the frame moves the cobble does not move. This one does not move, okay, because there's a cover there blocking it from moving. Okay, so that's an important concept with this build that we're about to work on. So I'm going to get a um, frame motor right here, and I'm going to face it down for now, just to demonstrate this to you guys, okay? Now, a good trick, by the way, is to look at the little gear on the box, and the side with the larger grayscale area, so like this part right here, is the direction that the arrow is pointing. So uh, if we were to take a look down here, the arrow should be pointing off to the left. I know you probably can't see that because I don't have a gravity suit, can't really fly, but the arrow is pointing to the left. So that direction is what's happening. So what's going to happen is when this guy gets a uh, redstone signal, he's going to move this entire frame complex that I've built out here uh, forward in that direction. Cool. Off to the horizon. And then uh, what I'm going to do is place down... Um, a battery box right here. Now, when this thing all moves, the frame motor is actually going to stay in its same position because the frame motor itself does not move along with the frames. So what I'm going to do is place a piece of um, cover right here, and then I want to place another frame motor. This guy is going to face this direction, okay? And I'm going to face that this way. Remember, the frame motor moves any block that touches it. Typically, you move frames, but in this case, we're going to move this frame motor. And these guys are going to work in tandem, as an inchworm might, and that's why it's nicknamed the inchworm drive. This thing is going to push everything forward, and when it's done moving, everything will have moved forward except for this. So at this point, this guy will be touching it. When this guy gets a redstone signal, he's just going to move this one block all by itself forward. Let's give this some power and demonstrate. Hopefully, I set this up right. This is a little tricky of a system. Now, I'm going to demonstrate this using uh, levers, okay? And they're going to fall off when the frame motor moves because there's no frame attached to the lever to keep them going. But here goes nothing. Ready? Watch this. Boom. The whole system moved, okay? And in order to get this frame motor to move, we do this. See how that worked? Okay? So, pretty important there. That is how you build an inchworm drive, and it inches along, okay? When we hit the lever, everything moves. And when we hit this lever, this guy moves. Pretty nifty. So like I said, the levers are going to fall, but that's okay. Because we're not going to use levers in the long run. So if we wanted to, we could set up something like automated so that there's like a timer. That basically when, this, when you send a redstone signal, this guy moves and the 
delay in uh, a frame moving, no matter the size, is 0.8 seconds. So that's how long of a delay you're going to want uh, between each move. If you want to be real balanced about it, you could just do one second, but 0.8 is the actual time it takes for this thing to move forward. Okay? So that's your basic inchworm drive, and by building that, we're able to move this entire platform forward. And I might leave this on top up here. Typically I build my inchworm drives on the bottom, but typically I also have some form of creative mode flight by this point. And I don't have a gravity suit just yet, so it's going to be a real pain to build this on the bottom of this platform, so maybe I'll keep it on the top. Why not? It could look cool. Alright guys, we're back. So there's a couple different ways you can accomplish what I'm looking to do, which is basically have a way to do this. But since I'm going to have uh, turtles on this thing doing a bunch of stuff, I want to kind of uh, create like an automatic control thing that it's all computer controlled. So I'm going to go ahead and set up this computer right here. Now this should work. Uh, in past experiences I've had a little bit of an issue with this, but I think that has been fixed. So we're actually going to uh, go ahead and run the uh, motion here just to prove that um, everything is cool. And look, it is. Nice. So no problem moving this computer on frames anymore, which is really good because, uh, you know, in the past, like I said, that was sometimes a problem. What I need to do now is set it up so that this uh, computer can actually do things. Uh, I need to place down uh, some red alloy wiring. Now, in order to place down red alloy wiring on frames, you can't simply place it on the frame itself. That's just not going to work. Um, so what I need to do is place it on the panels. So panels are slightly different than covers. That's why I'm using two different materials. I went ahead and got myself uh, some of the chiseled stone bricks here, as you can see, to use panels. Panels, of course, being twice as thick as covers. So, not the same thickness. Alright, the panels are what you need to use whenever you want to lay wiring or anything along those lines on your frame machine. So now I've got this nifty little setup. And I'm just going to do a real quick program called Move. It. Uh, let's do uh, Frame Move, uh, something like that. Why not? And we're going to do um, a redstone pulse on the left. So let's do that. All right, guys, real quick program here. Um, I just wrote a function to pulse on a particular side. So you tell it which side you want to pulse. And it sets the redstone output to true, sleeps for 0.4 seconds, sets the redstone output to false, and sleeps for 0.4 seconds, which adds up to the 0.08, right? So like I said, 0 .08, 0.08 seconds is a uh, motion. So I pulse it on the left. And that has a built-in 0.8 second wait. And then I pulse it on the back. Let's see what happens. There we go. And it works perfectly. What do you think, Muggs? Not bad? Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. He's like, ah, I can do better. No, no. With the <laughs> I'm teasing. <laughs> All right. So uh, now what we want to make is uh, the, the turtle part. So what we want to do, basically, is the following. Let's see. I'm going to want, probably, do you have those, um, those uh, chests? Yeah. Thank you, sir. So we want to use the same color code, the white, 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 remember, that we're using um, for our other area here. And I'm just going to place these guys all along like so. There we go. Ah, thank you, sir. Quite kind. Cool. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, and then um, in tandem with that, I want to place the turtles. Let's see. If I do the turtles like this... Okay, so we're going to need another frame here. We're probably going to want the frame to go over the top of the turtle because the turtle is then going to deploy its quarry there. And we're going to need a power conduit here. So that's how we're going to need this to work. Okay, so that's how. That's a good way, by the way, guys, to build. Like, kind of map it out so that you know exactly where you're placing things before you place it down, and then you'll be in good shape. So I'll be back in a second. All right, guys, so just to demonstrate this, I want to test this little setup real quick. I'm going to run my um, 
frames along this line here. Now everything should be connected. When you're building a frame machine, one of the good things you want to do is every time you make any additions, go ahead and test that it can actually move still because it's very easy to uh, you know miss something or you know one block out of place and this thing gets stuck. Hooray, it's working still. And you'll know that it got stuck because it'll either not move or it'll leave something behind, like a little piece of it will get stuck behind. But this is pretty straightforward, so we're doing okay so far. Next up, um, you can see here I've already got my Energy Tesseract. It's still connected to frequency one main power, which is good. And I've got the, um, the, the energy conduits here. Now I'm gonna real quick write a program on the very first turtle here, Q1, that's gonna process the entire transaction for us. So let's try it out. All right, guys, three simple steps. Deploy the quarry. So select whatever's in slot one, and place it down in front of you. Cool. Step two, um, we should probably be waiting in between this, so we're probably gonna have a five or se 10 second wait. We have to tweak that a little bit. We're gonna test it out. Uh, clear inventory. What that's gonna do is um, it's gonna loop through all 10 slots in the inventory. So for I is one to 10, do the following. Uh, select whatever is um, I, not one, I debugging as I go, uh, and drop um, whatever is in that slot down, which happens to be the ender chest underneath the turtle. Got it? And then at the end of that, we're going to select slot one again. And then get minor. Just to be safe, we're going to make sure we have selected slot one, and we dig whatever's in front of us. Okay? So it's going to be deploy, clear inventory, and then get minor. Cool? So we're going to do deploy. Then we're going to sleep for about five seconds. Clear inventory get minor. And that's the program called Cycle. All right, so what do you think, Mugs? Are we ready to do this? How about I give you the honor? Do you want to run the first Cycle program on the first turtle? Here goes nothing. Nice. And it's going to go all the way down to the bottom. And it should select everything. And then when it's done, it's going to break the quarry, and it cleared out the inventory in the turtle. So that chest probably sucked up some good stuff. Nice. Now, what we're going to want to do, okay, I'm going to actually um, just check. Turtle should be empty inventory. Nice. So I'm going to move this thing. There it goes. And we're ready to run that program again. Cycle. Boom. It's going to deploy. It's going to get a whole bunch of stuff. It's going to wait a few seconds until it's done filling up its inventory, and then it's going to clear everything out, and then it's going to pick the thing back up. Now, that was close. We actually got a little close there. I think it was right, right on the edge of finishing the program and quarrying to the bottom of the earth before, um, oh boy, I was sneaking too. Look at that. We hit bedrock. Awesome. So uh, I think we might want to bump it up from five seconds to maybe 10. I don't know. But there's one thing we don't have on these turtles that we're going to need. And that is a way to control them all at once. And for that, we're going to need a wireless modem, which we don't have on these turtles. So luckily, I've already named them. Um, I'm going to go get about 16 wireless modems and attach them on here. And then I could probably use this program, this terminal right here, to control them all. And what it'll do is it'll send a signal to everybody saying, hey, deploy your uh, miners, and then, um, you know, it'll, it'll do all the commands for us. Pretty cool, right? So I'll be back in just a minute, and uh, actually, yeah, that sounds like a good plan. Maybe I'll make Mugs go make me some stuff. Mugs, can you make me some uh, modems? About 16 of them? Um, just the wireless ones? Red yeah, stone. the wireless modems the, for the turtles. Yeah, and sure. then I'll, uh, I'll put them on these turtles here. And uh, I've already labeled them, so I think I might uh, just want to test one or two more things while he's off. So we'll be back in a few minutes once we're done testing and get about 16 modems. All right, guys, real quick program I wrote here called Await Command. And what that's going to do is it's going to open up the wireless modem that we attached. Thank you, Mugs. Thank you very much, Mugs, for getting me those uh, wireless modems. And it's going to no uh, repeatedly loop through, and it's going to wait for a message on the red net frequency, okay? And what that does, it's like sending a message between one computer and another. And it actually uh, receives which computer sent it, what the message was, and how far away that computer is. All we care about is the message. We're going to print it out, and then we're going to run, we're going to try and run the program with the name of the message, okay? So let's go ahead and run await 
command, and it's just going to sit here and wait. It's just going to sit and wait for a uh, program to be sent to it from a master server, and that's this one over here. All this guy does is um, opens up the RedNet modem on the right, and he sends to computer number 22. Computer number 22 happens to be this guy. He just sends the word cycle. And remember, we wrote the program called cycle, which will um, deploy the quarry and do the whole thing, right? So all I have to do now from this computer, when I run the command dig, it should go ahead and deploy. So mugs, how about you come on over here? You go ahead and run the dig command, and I'll watch what happens over here. And then I fell. Did you run? You it? ready? Yep, go for it. Ta-da! How cool is that? Nice. And then we've got, uh, I made the delay 10 seconds instead of 5, because uh, Muggs actually checked something out for me um, between the last uh, episode and this one. He said uh, he checked it out, and it looks like uh, these um, little miners can actually pull about 25 Minecraft jewels a pop, which is a lot, actually, since our, um, you know, this guy can only output 100 at a time. So um, we might need a longer delay. We might need to actually have this be a little bit of a longer delay. We might need uh, to supply more power. I haven't entirely figured out how I'm going to handle that. We'll come up with something, though. Maybe I'll have two of these frequency things, you know, and we'll double the speed. We're going to have to kind of try it out and see how well it does. But long story short, we're probably going to wind up having a longer delay than uh, five seconds or so. But still, you know. We'll see. All right, so next up, now that that worked the way it was supposed to, so it should have printed out the word cycle, and since it's running in a loop, it'll keep waiting. So now all I have to do is modify this code a little bit and have it send the command to all the computers, and we want all the computers here uh, to know about that command. So let's actually set the delay to about 20 seconds. And then I'm going to paste spin it for you guys. And I'll also paste bin await command. Oh yeah, paste bin put would help. There you go. So both those programs are paste binned. And when I'm done with the dig command, I'll go ahead and paste bin that for you too. So we'll be back in just a minute once I've uh, copied the cycle and the await command program to all the turtles. All right, guys, we've uh, put the programs on all these turtles. We've uh, set them all in await command mode. Ta-da. And uh, we are implemented the uh, frame thing. So let's first, before we do anything, is try and move this whole shabam. So uh, look out, mugs, we're about to move. Oh, and I made the program dig. It just loops through uh, every turtle ID. 22 through 37 is what I've used. OK. So uh, what do I name this thing? Frame move. Nice. The fact that it actually moved is a really good sign. It means that we didn't make any problems or anything. So now the real question is, is 20 seconds long enough of a delay uh, to hit bedrock? Let's find out. When I run the dig command, I'm going to let uh, I'm gonna let Muggs do this. You go ahead and run the dig command. I'm going to give you the honor of running the very first dig command on this massive quarry. And they should all instantly uh, deploy their uh, miners and then start digging. And then we're going to give it a 20-second delay is what I made it, like I said. And then hopefully they will then dump all their contents into the chest below. And we'll see what happens. Now, that they'll, they'll automatically pick it up uh, after 20 seconds, so that's no big deal. Um, but it's just a question of whether or not we'll hit bedrock. <laughs> Ready, Mugs? Yep. Go for it. Oh, wait. I have a, you know, real quick thing I should do. I should probably put, um, you know, some mining wells inside all these turtles, huh? <laughs> that is fail on my part. All right, we'll be back. All right, Mugs is putting the last of the uh, mining wells in the turtles. The last program stopped running. Everybody's ready to go again. Go ahead and move us forward one, Mugs, and then we will um, go ahead and do the dig again. Sweet. All right, ready when you are, sir. Now this should work. Please work. 
Nice! Look at that! Oh, that is cool! And look, they're all going. So, of course, like, uh, you know, it's evenly distributing the power, and it's all tunneling straight down. Now, the question is, will we hit bedrock? That is really the question here. Within 20 seconds, will we get down to the bottom? Oh, boy. Good question. I don't know. We're gonna have to wait until it's done. So, 20 seconds later, they'll all get broken, as you can see, and the turtle has them all. Oh, that is cool. That is really cool. Did we hit bedrock? It does not appear to me that we did. I'm going to jump down there and be risky. All right, yeah, we got down to about Y level uh, 31. And where, what, what Y level are you at, Muggs? I'm at 780. 80? So we moved 50 blocks in 20 seconds, right? We're going to want to move at least another 25 blocks. So uh, we're going to want to move about 30 seconds instead of 20, right? That makes yeah. sense in my brain. I don't know if that really works or not, but i got to get out of this big hole. So I will be back in just a minute. All right, guys, ran into two problems. Number one, by waiting until these guys were completely done mining, they had too much stuff collected to store in the ender chest all at once. They failed to put things in. So what I'm actually going to do is have them put items in every five seconds. So I modified the uh, cycle command. You can see there's the pastebin code now. Grab it if you need. Um, but basically, it does two things. First off, um, it's going to go ahead and uh, clear the inventory every five seconds. So as soon as it deploys, it waits five seconds, clears the inventory, waits five seconds, clears the inventory. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Okay. Uh, the other thing is uh, when it's ready to grab the miner, it uh, checks if the item count in slot one is greater than zero. If it is, it clears the inventory again. And it's going to keep doing that until there's nothing in slot zero. Then it's going to go ahead and grab the, uh, the, the uh, miner there. Cool? Okay. Good deal. So we're going to await command here. And here goes nothing. All right. You go ahead and run the uh, dig command mugs, and I'm going to keep an eye on these guys. Okay. Cool, man. So they're cycling, and we should see a bunch of stuff showing up in the ender chest within about five seconds. So they should be clearing their inventory here. Um, they might not have got... Oh, there we go. Yeah, look, stuff showing up. Cool. So that's probably going to work better for us. Now, remember, we're waiting 30 seconds now instead of, um, you know, less. So we should maybe at least hit close to bedrock, if not all the way. So... 30 seconds later, we should have completely cleared down to bedrock. I'm hoping. What do you think, Muggs? Gonna make it? I'm hoping so. No? <laughs> think we'll need a little bit longer time? Longer time or more power. Oh, your predictions are false, sir. We hit bedrock. Did we? Yep. We certainly nice. did. Nice. I am standing on bedrock. Look at that. Nice. So 30 seconds clears 16 lines straight down to bedrock. I call that a win. And then we move forward. And we run dig again. And you guys might have noticed here, but when it was done running its cycle, um, not all of them got picked up at the same time. That's because, again, we put that little piece of code in at the end that said, hey, if you've got anything left in the inventory after the cycle's done, go ahead and clear it again. Like, make sure that it's totally empty before we, uh, you know, do anything. So that is pretty neat. I like that function. So you can see here, like, as we're checking, some of these will break um, first, but not everything will break at the exact same moment. Um, but I think that's pretty slick. So we should... I'm going to make sure we get down to bedrock again. Long story short. See, look, random one's breaking, and we we're just waiting for the um, ender chest to clear out some space. Cool. I'm liking this. I'm liking this a lot. Yeah, it's a bit faster than most other ways. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty good, right? And, you know, 
I'm thinking now that it's got like a longer delay, like we have a 30 second delay between activations. Now, of course, if we added more miners to this, it would take more power and therefore it would increase the delay, but we could probably come up with something if we really wanted to. Um, we could, if we wanted to, have multiple tesseracts here. So what we could have is two tesseracts, one on each side, uh, supplying power, and I believe, if, if I'm right about this, I could cut the delay down from 30 to 15 seconds if I did that. Um, because with two Tesseracts, we'd be getting twice as much um, power. So that's what I'm thinking. So that's maybe something we're going to have to tweak in between this episode and next, and maybe come back next episode uh, with some changes made. All right, so uh, Muggs and I will be back in just a moment here. All right, guys, so at this point, we definitely need to wrap up. And I'm going to call this frame machine pretty successful. Now, it's obviously not completely automated yet. I have a little bit of programming to do on this computer right here uh, in order to automate everything. But, you know, I think we've done a pretty good job. Like I said, I might want to try a second Tesseract down at the end here uh, to see what kind of shenanigans I can pull. But I think it will be pretty neat. Uh, for now, though, we got to wrap up the episode. So, Muggs, thanks again for coming by. Definitely appreciate your awesome donation to Child's Play Charity. Um, I really hope you had a good time, man. Yeah. Got to see you do a new build I haven't seen anybody else do before. Cool. So it was pretty fun. Awesome. Now I'm glad you were able to come and hang out. And uh, I hope uh, you guys out watching this on the YouTube audience enjoyed uh, having a special guest on the series. Uh, definitely leave some comments and let me know how you liked it. Um, I'm thinking I might do something like this, not like, you know, regularly, but every now and then, uh, especially if it means a little bit of uh, charity fundraising. I wouldn't mind uh, giving off something again in the future. So I'd like to hear from you guys. Let me know what you thought of the episodes with mugs here hanging out. Um, you know, having a special guest on and, you know, maybe it'll mean some other people be able to get on at some point. So, Direwolf20 and Mugs signing off on this episode of the Let's Play. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And like I said, we've got uh, some more tweaks to make to the system, but I think it's pretty powerful. Alright, guys. Take it easy. And thanks again, Mugs. Yeah, thank you.